Hello, good friends. Today we'll be looking at a simple MATLAB code for bisection method. And bisection method has me, happens to be one of the interesting methods that is used to solve, to we'll find the roots of nonlinear equations. Now let's look at it. So we have some few questions or few equations that will be playing around it. So coming to line six, that's when we want to look at the real code. We we first of all ask the user to supply the initial value, the first value of guess under the interval, and then we come to the B, we ask him to supply the, the other one as well. So let's take for instance under under line four, we have zero and one. So we first ask the users of supply zero and then supply one as the B value. And then we then come to F, which we ask the user to supply to tell us, give us what the function under consideration, which can be this one or this one. Or any any nonlinear equations that you might come come at across that you are asked to find the root when given a certain interval. So we then come to line nine, which of which we want to clear the screen so that we'll do some observations. And then since we are dealing with value, we set our initial starting point to be equal to one. Okay. Then we now dive into the code and look at how bisection method actually works. From line 12, we, we are saying, okay, we want to do a check. First to be sure, first to be sure that our roots lies between these two intervals, A and B. We find the functional value times the fun of A and, and times the functional value of B. Once it's less than what zero, when it's negative, then it tells us that our root lies between these two points. When this condition fails, then we are saying, that, okay, now, then display, okay, tell the user that the root does not lie. That's when, when it's possible, then tell the user that the root does not lie or cannot be found. So, in other ways, we say, what well, display, what no solution was found. So, when this condition happens to be true, then we now look at the while loop, the, our iteration. So, with our iteration, we have already stated that set our initial starting point number to be n to be equal to one so when you come here we are saying okay when you come here check if our n is let is our n less than 100 yes of which our one n is one so yes so now you can go ahead and perform the iteration so when you when it comes here perform everything that's within here and you come here and increase the counter to two and it will keep increasing the counter until it gets to what a, a number until this condition fail. So now let's look at it. How did bisection actually works? As the word implies, bisect. So we take the interval a and b, add them, and then we bisect it by two. We divide it into what two. So then we are then saying that okay, now we want to find out okay the midpoint that we have obtained that is C. We check the functional value here. When we check the functional value, we want to find out if the functional value that we have obtained, if the functional value that we have of C that we have obtained is is not zero. If it's not zero, then we go ahead and then we'll do everything within here. But when the functional value is equal to zero, then that is the actual root that we have, we are looking for. Then go ahead and tell the user to go ahead and will display the output. Now solution obtained is num to string. Now it's convert, since we are dealing with string, convert the number that you have, you have that is C to a string and display the output. When this condition fails, when this condition is true, which is line 18, then what you are saying is then go ahead and check the functional value of A times what C. When it is less than 
make it when it's less than what zero or or it, in other words it has a negative value then it tells us that our root lies between what a and c which is the midpoint so the original b value is not needed so we then move focus on what a and c but we realize that for computational purposes for instance what we have here since we'll be doing iteration we for computational purposes then we are saying that okay assign the c value that you have to what b but when this condition fail that's when you have a positive value then it tells us our root does not lies between what a and c but rather the root lies between what c and b then this line is telling us that okay since the root lies between b and c then you go ahead and then we don't need the old a value again so we just have to assign our c value to a so it will keep iterating until it happens to come up come to the last value that we have set that it should not exceed so that's what basically what the bisection method means now we'll keep bisecting and checking the point if the functional value of two points the product of the functional value of two points is equal to one zero is equal to what it's a negative value then it tells us that our root then lies between these two intervals Hello, from here we want to try if our code is really working so from here we want to call the script name this is what bisection or bisectmented bisectmented uh, i've already done it so i just call it and it said enter the first value of the guest interval which we have the first value to be equal to two and our second value our end value to be equal to three then it asks for the anonymous function the function that we want to find the root for given the interval so we then we just go ahead and have our x Hello, so now we happen to obtain our midpoint to be 2.5. So then we check the functional value which gives us 4.620. We have seen that okay, there is a new assignment of B which tells us the previous B value, the root does not form within what the C and B. So since the root is now between what A and B, then we need to do a new assignment. So we happen to have our new B value to be 2.50 and then we find the same midpoint which happens to give us 2.25 and then we also check the functional value and it gives us what uh, 0 0.3906 we keep on iterating so we happen to see that okay, our our previous B value, the root still do not lies between what our A and the new B value. So we have to still do a new assignment of which our B second B is taking the C value again. So we still have to we go ahead to find a midpoint. A midpoint which the third midpoint which gives us 2.125. We keep on iterating until we happens to get to our convergent value or the approximate value that we are interested in so which gave us from here we have seen our c value that is what 2.2240 so it's kind of, it's as if it we can even view it from here that we have we have obtained convergence long time but since we set our iteration to be equal to 100 so it has to keep doing it until it got to the 100 iteration so we look at the same example with a given a different given interval and see if we also find the root if so now let's look at it so 
So we call the function again. So it's now telling us to give us the first value of this interval, which we want to enter for. And our second one is what five. We already have the function, so we just call the function. So it tells us what no solution. You can try your hands on these examples as well and try to get the approximate roots. We have tried the first one and it works. So you can also try your hands on the there's the other uh, other two functions here or equations. You can try your hands on a couple of questions that you might have chance on and it will still help you with the help of this simple bisection method you'll be able to get the approximate word solution and in my next video we'll be looking at creating a simple function that can do the syntax creating a simple function that can do the syntax so this one has brought us to the end of this lesson if this video has been of help to you please don't forget to subscribe like and comment thank you